Okay, so let's review um, numbers and exponents. And where we'll actually start is with the number systems. So you are going to have a question, one or two questions on the number systems. So what you need to remember is that all numbers that we deal with in this course are what's called real numbers. Okay, we'll only ever give you a number that's real. But then what happens is we break the real numbers into two categories. They are either rational, and a lot of textbooks denote rational numbers as Q, or real numbers could be irrational. And that's denoted by Q bar. Okay. So the irrational numbers, I always called them the ugly numbers. Um, the most famous irrational number is pi, and then the square root of 2 is another irrational number. So what makes these numbers ugly is if you either typed in pi or the square root of 2 on your calculator, a couple things will happen with their decimals. They will never terminate they will never repeat. So their decimals aren't nice. They're non-terminating, non-repeating, and I can't go into a fraction, which is key. Math one fraction, irrational numbers can't go into fractions. So irrationals, what happens is their decimals never terminate or repeat. Okay. With the rational numbers, those are nice numbers. Their decimals terminate or they'll repeat. Okay. So for example, um, 0 0.25 is a rational number. It's a nice number. That decimal if I typed in on my calculator 0 0.25 and I math one fraction it, it will go into a fraction. Another really nice decimal is 0 0.3 repeating. That's a repeating nice decimal. That will go into a fraction. So I would type in 0 point, a whole bunch of threes, math one fraction, and that's one third. Any fractions are rational. Okay, you do not need to know like the natural whole in integers. You just need to classify rational versus irrational. I will tell you to remind you for 20-1 uh, what the natural numbers were. The natural numbers were the kids counting numbers. And remember what number do kids always start at? One, so one, two, three. The whole numbers, whole has, it looks like a zero in it. So the whole numbers are zero and then one, two, three. So the whole numbers include all the natural numbers uh, as well as zero. The integers are the negative numbers like negative three, negative two, negative one. Zero is an integer as is one, two, and three. Natural, whole, and integer, no decimals are allowed. So if there's a decimal, like 0.25 or 0.33 repeating, those are rational, but they're not going to be natural, whole, or integers. So what would happen is you would have to classify numbers. So for example, if I said the third root of negative 27, right, what would this number be classified? Is that rational or irrational? So what you would do is on your calculator, you would go to math, number four, third root of negative 27 is negative three. Is that a rational or an irrational number? It's rational, it's a nice number. I could turn that into a fraction by putting it over one. It's an integer, but it's a rational number. Um, if I gave you, the square root of 10, and I said, is that rational or irrational? You would go to your calculator and you would type in the square root of 10. 
and it looks like there's no repeats or it doesn't terminate, you could double check by going math one fraction. That is an irrational number, okay? So the third root of 27, that guy would be Q. That would be rational. This guy would be Q bar. It is irrational, okay? So you have to be able to classify numbers. Okay, let's talk about radicals, and then we're going to simplify radicals. So if I give you the third root of 2 to the power of 3, this is what is called your root or your index. Whatever you could circle underneath your radical sign, that is called your radicand. And this entire thing, the third root of 2 to the power of 3, that is a radical. I should actually say the radicand, you guys, if I said what is the radicand, it would be 2 to the power of 3. Um, and you type in our, on your calculator either 2 to the power of 3 or 2 times 2 times 2, the radicand would be 8 or 2 to the power of 3. Okay? What you need to know how to do is how to reduce radicals, or sim sorry, simplify radicals. So let's see how we would do that. Okay. Take the square root of 80, take out your calculators, and remember what we do is you divide that number, we're going to divide it by the prime numbers. So the prime numbers were 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. You have to know those primes. But you take 80, and you always divide it by the lowest prime first, which is a 2. 80 divided by 2 is 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. You will always get to a position where this last number is a prime number. It will be a 2, a 3, a 5, a 7, 11. Circle all of your prime numbers. And the square root of 80 could be rewritten as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Then you're going to put in the invisible index, which is a 2. That tells you to circle pairs, okay? If this index was a 3, we'd circle triples. If the index was a 4, we'd circle groups of 4. So you're going to go through and you're going to circle any pairs that you see. For every pair, how many do we always take out? 1. Yes, because you guys, 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So cross both those out take out a 2. Cross both those guys out, take out a 2. What's left over stays under the radical sign and becomes the radicand, and that's going to be a 5. 2 times 2 is 4 root 5. What you would do is you would check on your calculator. This is a really easy question to check. So how you would check that is you would type in the square root of 80 on your calculator, And you would type in 4 root 5. You'll get the exact same decimal. Okay? Just to review the names of these radicals, um, the, what we started with, square root of 80, that's what's called an entire radical. And it's called an entire radical because it has an invisible 1 in front as the coefficient, in front of the radical sign. What we did was we simplified that, and we got 4 root 5. 4 root 5 is the mixed radical. Okay. Try this one. The third root of 320. See how you would go about simplifying that. So always start with your lowest prime. So 
so we would get 2 and 160, 2 and 80, 2 and 40, 2 and 20. Go until your tree ends with a mixed radical, or sorry, your uh, tree ends with a prime number, a 2, a 3, a 5, a 7. The third root of 320 is the same thing as the third root of 1, 2, 3, 6 twos and a 5. You would look at that um, index or that root, which is a 3. That tells you to circle triples. For every triple, Cross it out, take out one. Cross it out, take out one. What's left would be the third root of five. Two times two is four times the third root of five. I would check on my calculator to see. So I would type in the third root of 320. Set your math button, number four. Third root of 320. And I would type in 4 times the third root of 5. And again, this is how you're going to know that you're correct. Okay? Let's see if you remember how to go in reverse. So, what going in reverse would look like? I would give you a mixed radical, and I would say, what would the equivalent entire radical be? So before we do this one, let's do this guy. Um, 3 and the square root of 2. So what we need to do is, if I want to write this as an entire radical, I need to get that 3 back underneath. But how am I going to write it underneath? Do you remember 3 to what power? So there's an invisible 2 here. So how I'm going to put that 3 underneath is as 3 squared. Because if I have a 3 on the outside, what was the number that the square root of that number will give a 3? Well, 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So to put that back under, you're going to square it. There's already a 2 under there, so that stays. Then on your calculator, you would just type in, what's 3 squared? 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And they would be equivalent, right? 3 root 2 and root 18 would be equivalent. So 3 root 2 and square root of 18. I'll give you another one, and then we'll do this guy. Um, turn this. into an entire radical. So again, the 2 needs to go back under. But you just can't put it in as a 2. You have to put it in underneath as 2 squared, because that will give you 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. There's a 5 under there, so that remains. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Ava, for the example given, 5 and the third root of 4, what am I putting underneath? The That's right. The 5 needs to go underneath, but it's going underneath as 5 to the power of 3. There's already a 4 underneath. If this is a third root, make sure that your answer is a third root. How I would type this in my calculator is I'd figure out what 5 to the power of 3 is. It's 125, but again, how I would do that is 5 to the power of 3 times 4. So 125 times 4 is 500, but it's a third root, 500, okay? Okay, let's do, is there a GCF LCM? I just want to skip to GCF and LCM 
and then sorry and then we'll go back but I want to make sure I get this GCF and LCM done so skip to page uh, where it will say unit two polynomials this should be with numbers it shouldn't be under polynomials okay the prime factorization of 24 so prime factorization the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. Prime factorization means rewrite 24 as a product of the prime numbers. So how would we do that? Well, we do our factor trees. 24 is a 2 times 12. 12 is 2 and 6. 6 is 2 and 3. The prime factorization of 24, what it would be written as is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Or I could write that in power form. Cooper, what would that guy be in power form? Yes. Sorry, 2 to the power of 3. So I've got a 2, and then I've got that 3 times. So 2 to the power of 3 times 3. So that's the prime factorization of 24. I could check that on my calculator by typing in 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Or I could type in 2 to the power of 3 times 3. Okay, so let's use our knowledge of prime factorization and we're going to do a GCF LCM question which you need to know how to do so in order to do GCF or LCM you have to be able to prime factorize so let's prime factorize 126 and let's prime factorize 98 So 126 would be 2 and 63. 63 is not divisible by 2, so I'm going to divide it by 3. And I'm going to get 3 and 21. Keep going using your 3s until it doesn't work. But I would get 3 and 7. And I'm done because 7 is a prime factor. So the GCF of 1, or sorry, uh, the prime factorization of 126 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. Do the same thing for 98. So 98 divided by 2 is 49. 49 is not divisible by 2. Right, so it's, you try 3. It's not divisible by 3, try 5. It's not divisible by 5 try 7 and it is divisible by 7. Okay, so 98 is equal to 2 times 7 times 7. In order to get the GCF, how we do that is you circle all of the prime factors that are common in both. So for example, I could circle a pair of twos here. I could circle a pair of sevens. So you circle all the prime factors that are common in both numbers. And then I'm going to write down, because I circled a pair of twos, I'm going to write down a two. Because I circled a pair of sevens, I'm going to write down a seven. You multiply those two numbers together and you'll get the GCF, which is 14. I'm going to give you another one that I want you to practice to see if you could get the GCF, and then I'll show you how to do LCM. Okay, let me just clear this. Okay, see if you could find the GCF of these two numbers. Um, if I took the prime factorization of 150, I would get 2 times 3 times 5 times 5.
if I took the GCF of 420, I would get 2 times 2, sorry, not the GCF, the prime factorization of 420. It'd be 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. The GCF, the greatest common factor of these two numbers, what's the biggest number that would divide into these two numbers? So circle what's common. For every group that you've circled, you would write a, one of those numbers. So write a 2, write a 3, write a 5. If you multiply that, you would get 30. What that means, you guys, 30 is the biggest number that would divide 150 is divisible by 30, and so is 420. The biggest number that we could divide into um, 150 and 420 that's common to both is 30. Okay, LCM. Let's see if you remember how to do a lowest common multiple question. Okay, so let's break down eight. Eight is two and four. 2 and 2. So 2 times 2 times 2. That would give you 8. Break down the prime factorization of 9, and we would get 3 and 3. Let's do the prime factorization of 12. We would get 2 and 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 12 would give us 2 times 2 times 3. In order to get the lowest common multiple, what we do is we took all of the prime factors of the first number. So take all of the prime factors of your first number. So I'm going to write down a 2, a 2, and a 2. Then we remember we cancel below. So for example, if I took out three twos, I could go to this row. If I had up to three twos, I could cancel them. There's no twos to cancel. So then I go to this row, and I could cancel up to three twos. Because I took out three twos, I could cancel three row twos here. There's no twos. I could cancel three twos here. There's two to cancel. So this guy goes, and this guy goes. Then I go to my second row after I've done my canceling, and I take out anything remaining, which would be a 3 and a 3. Then I cancel. So I say I just took out two 3s from this row. I go below it, and I say I could take out up to two 3s. There's only one 3 to take out. If there was anything remaining here, I would bring it up, but there's not. So the LCM is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, and that would be 72, okay? Just to do that, let's do the 150 and the 420, and let's do the LCM of that guy. So 150, the prime factorization was 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. 420, the prime factorization was 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. So the LCM of these two numbers, you take all of the prime factors of the first number. Then you're able to cancel below. So I took out 1, 2. That means I get to cancel up to 1, 2. So one of them is gone. I took out a 3. That means in every row below, I could take, I could cancel a three. I took out two fives, so I could cancel up to two fives down here. What's remaining after you cancel, you write. So I take out a two here and a seven. You multiply that together. And you'll get an LCM, a lowest common multiple, of 2,100. Okay?
let's review some exponent laws and then I'll give you some to practice for homework. Okay, so the exponent laws. A to the negative 2. We can't have negative exponents. You're going to bring that into the denominator. You're going to reciprocate it, and then your exponent will become positive. That would be 1 over a squared. Okay. If I have negative 2, a to the negative 2, b to the 4, it is only the negative exponents that would move. The a has a power of negative 2. It is the a that would move below the fraction. The negative 2 stays where it is. The b to the 4 stays where it is. You bring the a down, and it will become positive 2. Okay? Okay, let's look at this example here. This first bracket, there's nothing I could do. So I'm going to bring this first bracket down. x to the 3, y to the negative 3 over 2. The second bracket, do you remember what the rule for power to power is? So let's say I had a to the 3 to the power of 2. What's that rule? Multiply. Power to a power, we multiply. So that would be a to the 6. So what's going to happen is I'm going to, this would be power to a power. So I'm going to multiply negative 1 times 4. So negative 1 times 4 would be x to the negative 4. And I'm going to multiply 1 half times 4. So remember, if you're doing it on your calculator, fractions are in brackets. So 1 over 2 times 4. That's going to give me a 2. Okay, now these x's could go together. They're being multiplied. But what is the rule when we multiply? What do I do to the exponents? Add. Okay, so it would be 3 plus negative 4, right? So you would say on your calculator, you're adding the exponents, so 3 plus negative 4 would give me x to the negative 1. Then I would have y, and I would have to figure out how many y's I would have. So this y and this y, they're being multiplied, which means you add the exponents. So I'm going to add negative 3 over 2 plus 2. Okay, so open bracket, negative 3 divided by 2 plus 2. Math 1 fraction, and I'm going to get y to the 1 half. Ashton, which variable would move? x. x, y stays where it is, and x would be written down here. Okay, I'm going to give you another one that's going to have division in it. write this guy down. x to the negative 2, y to the 2 thirds over x to the 1 quarter, y to the negative 2. Okay, this is going to be quotient law. My x's are being divided. What's the law for division? What's quotient law? subtraction. You subtract the exponents. So how you're going to type this into your calculator is you're going to type negative 2, the numerator, then you hit a minus, and then whatever this guy is, it's a fraction, so it's going to go in a bracket. So I would type in negative 2, then I'm subtracting, 
what am I subtracting? I'm subtracting a quarter. So open bracket, 1 divided by 4. And I would get negative 9 over 4 times, let's figure out how many y's I would have. 2 thirds is what I'm going to enter first. It's a fraction, so I'm going to put that in a bracket. So 2 thirds minus, hit your minus sign. And then whatever this number is, it's negative 2, so I'm going to type, I'm going to write minus negative 2. Math 1 fraction. And I'll get 8 over 3. The 1 that gets written below would be the negative exponent, which is this guy. So the y stays where it is. And the x goes down below, and negative 9 over 4 is now 9 over 4. Now, do you remember how to write that as a radical? Do you remember flower power? So, for example, if I said a to the 3 over 4, what I could do is I could get rid of that fraction by putting that a underneath a radical sign. The ground would be right here, and remember that root scroll below ground. So it would be the fourth root of A. What would this be called? That's the power, the power of 3. So I could write it like this, or I could write it as the fourth root of A and put it all to the power of 3. Okay, so the one that we just did, that is my answer, but I could get rid of those rational exponents by putting the y underneath a radical sign, find the ground, root scroll below ground, so that's the third root of y to the power of 8 over, put that x under a radical, the fourth root of x to the power of 9. I'm going to give you some to practice, and then we will finish this off tomorrow. We'll finish numbers and exponents tomorrow. Okay, so to practice, I want you to do number two. So a whole bunch of simplifying. I want you to do number three. And number four, tomorrow we'll do five together, okay? So do those ones tonight.